The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host. Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OA, one of the hosts of the last three brain cells and the host of Between Taramina's and Orient Able Intelligence. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on um, Orient Able Television. Um, a lot to look at this week, obviously, from girls' basketball. We're already one week into the girls' season. The boys' season kicks off this week. Um, so there's a lot to break down. Um, obviously, when you look at the status of girls basketball. Um, my early thoughts, we had the um, OA Lakes Valley Challenge um, that occurred this week um, with the OA winning seven games to two. Um, so when you really look at, you know, recapping the week that was, um, you got to really look at, obviously, okay, who are your top teams? Who are your teams that are middle of the pack? And then who are the teams that are really struggling? Um, I think bottom line is that I think I'm starting to get an idea where each team sits right now when it comes to the first week of the year. I think the team that really made the biggest statement of the week was Oxford. And the reason why I say this is when you look at what Oxford has done, um, you know, the week that they had, um, clearly, of course, Starting off the year against Lake Orion, um, losing that one in a tough one, 50 to 41. Um, Miranda Winepko had a silent 15 points in that game. Um, and then you have to look at the next day, Wednesday. Of course, that was the one year anniversary of the tragedy. Um, you know, we all know what happened that November 30th day. Um, it was, they called it Wildcat Remembrance Day. Um, you know, that was what Oxford, um, the community of Oxford called it, um, you know, and I know that had to be really difficult on, it was really difficult on me that night. I mean, like I wrote a column on it. Um, I had my brother, Anthony Termina, host of History Now and Between Terminus, he wrote a column. Um, also the, um, on the, um, on the tragedy, um, you know, and the, and the tributes. Um, and then, and then they got back in the basketball on Friday night for their home opener against the pier. Um, they looked really good um, in that one. Um, and then the um, and then on that Saturday, I mean, when you look at what happened on that Saturday, um, you know, when they went into Birmingham Mary and they took on the Mustangs, um, it ended up being a really good game. And it was a statement win for Ox. Um, the fact that they went in there, um, and they just, they, they went in there and they, they just stunned, um, they stunned the Mustangs at Mary Ciceroni court, um, 57, 46. Um, when I looked at that game, I was going like, wow, you know, um, when you look at the stats, Miranda, when I caught 15, Allison Huffsetter had, um, had 15, um, when I caught 18, um, Nevaeh Wood at 11, um, Peyton Richter um, had a nice game. Um, Sophia Rob had 11 points. Um, so when you really look at that win for Oxford against Birmingham Marion, um, that's pretty significant because when you look at that game and you study that game, I mean, yes, there's a reason why I had Oxford ranked third to start the year behind West Bluefield and Lake Orion. Um, that team... Is it, they're very good. I mean, they 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 can play defense. Their starting five is very good. Um, they have two very good guards, good ball handlers. Sophia Roth's a solid ball handler. Um, Miranda Wanemko, um, she can give you points when need be. Um, Peyton Richter coming back from an ACL injury that says something right there. Um, and then you know, and then of course you look at the bench. I mean, obviously the bench. I still think it's the big question mark for this team. And I really do think it's a question mark because of what happened. Um, but you got to give credit, I think, you know, to Coach Rachel Breyer for what she's done this offseason. Um, bringing in her, um, you know, bringing in um, an assistant coach who has a ton of experience under Mary Ciceroni at Birmingham Marion. Um, he's been made a big impact for the Mustangs. I'm um, from the Mustangs to the Wildcats, um, 
obviously, you know, when you look at Ox- when you look at Oxford, um, for me, this that win is a statement not only for the for the white for the rest of the white, but also in the state as well. I mean, you look at the district that Oxford's in this postseason. Obviously, you're in a district with Grand Blank and Davidson. I don't think Grand Blank's as good as people think they are. Um, I'm not really sold on Grand Blank, even though you look at, of course, the Michigan Storm AU program, who's hyping up several Grand Blank players. Um, I, I just don't buy Grand Blank this year. I just don't know if I can trust them this year. Um, Davison, obviously, we know Davison last year. They were very young. Um, I mean, they were veteran heavy a year ago. I mean, they're better this year, but I just think that when you look at Davison, I don't know if I could trust Davison right now. And then we know Lapierre's off to an 0-2 start. Um, Holly's been struggling. Um, so when you look at Oxford's situation in the district, I think that's, I think what this shows is that Oxford can compete with anybody, especially when you knock off a team that is as capable as Birmingham Marion is. I mean, you know what it sends to the white, obviously. I think it's a message center to North Farmington, especially. Um, because, you know, yes, the Raiders are 2-0, and but, you know, you've got to play these guys twice. I mean, you know, so when you really look at what Oxford's win against Birmingham Marion um, does, it says a lot, because clearly, you know, it says, okay, and what does Lake Orient's win against Oxford say, you know, if for Lake Orient? I mean, it tells you that Lake Orient's got a heck of a team. I mean, the Dragons, you know, they, I've called like, I talked to Matt Mowry the other day and I, um, of the Oakland Press, and I told him, I said, look, Lake Orient's probably the deepest team in Oakland County. And he agrees with me there. You know, and I, and I think the bottom line is Lake Orient, you know, when you look at the Dragons, they are the deepest team in Oakland County. I mean, you know, anybody can, I mean, you got a lot of interchangeable positions. Um, you got a lot of pieces that Coach Bob Bridges has that he can go with. Um, so when you really look at it, when you really look at Oxford's win against Birmingham Marion and you compare Lake Orient's win against Oxford, what does that say about both teams? I mean, yes, these two teams are going to do it again in January over at Ian Smith. Um, but what does that tell you for both sides? So, but when you look at Oxford's win against Birmingham Marion, that says a lot. That clearly says a lot because of what the Wildcats have done. I mean, yes, they're experienced. I mean, like, yes, they, you know, I think Nevaeh Woods really improved their game. Miranda Wanamco has been really good. I think having Peyton Richter back is a big deal, um, especially when you look at what Richter can bring, obviously, rebounding. Um you know, obviously, Nevaeh Wood having to play the five last year. I think, um, I think Nevaeh Wood's still the five this year. Maybe moving Rick to the four. I mean, like, I mean, Oxford's got some interchangeable parts of that starting five. But I think the key player in that stretch for them has been Allison Hofstetter. I mean, when you really look at what she's done, she's been consistent. I mean, she had eight points against Lake Orion. She had eight points against Lapeer. And then 15 against Murray and Marion. I mean, that tells you something right there. I mean, it really does. That Huff said has been really consistent. Um, she's there when you need her. And she's only a sophomore. I mean, that tells you something right there. I mean, Sophia Robs had some nice games, especially at home. Um, she she had a nice game against Lapeer the other night. Um, so when we really look at it here, the only concern I have with Oxford, honestly, is their bench. I mean, their bench is a big concern. Um, it still is, but anytime you go in and beat a Birmingham Marion team that, you know, obviously got a very good player, Mackenzie Swanson, um, you know, that's one of the favorites in the state, you know, to, you know, make some noise in the postseason, um, like they are, yes, they got a new coach and all that, but still the prestige, the, the, um, you know, of that program with Birmingham Marion, that tells you something right there. That tells you the statement that that team made. Um, bottom line is, when they really look at it here, um, you know, you got to get credit where credit's due um, with Oxford. Obviously, with the week that that team has had, 
that program has had. Obviously, of course, um, honoring Hannah St. Juliana, of course, um, you know, having her 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 jersey on the um on the bench. I remember that. Um, I expect they're gonna do that the rest of the year. Um, you know, I but I really think in that Birmingham Marion game, and I think you know, I think her spirit was there. I really do. I mean, you know, just guiding the Wildcats to their um to the win against Birmingham Marion. I mean, obviously, you know, when you look at, you know, when you look at Oxford the rest of the way, you know, we're early, so early in the year, um, but they've already got the league's biggest statement win of the year. I mean, you know, with that win against Birmingham Marion, I mean, that tells you how strong they are this year. I mean, you know, they are a very good team. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, there really isn't. I mean, you got to get credit where credit's due. I mean, you know, so we'll see what happens. I mean, but Oxford right now off to a really good start. What does this do for the league? What does this do for the white? Um, I think they're my biggest shock, biggest surprise of the, um, of the early season. Obviously, I knew Oxford would be very good to start the year. Um, if there's a team I've been really down on, um, really that bothers me, a team that really has been bothering me, it's the Berkeley Bears. Um, you know, I had Berkeley ranked really high to start the year. I mean, I had them at eight to start the year. Um, and I thought, okay, Berkeley's a team that I think could, you know, make some noise. I mean, like, you know, they coming off a district championship, um, knocked off a very good, um, you know, playing a very good, um, Macomb Lance Cruz North team, um, a growth point South. I mean, they had, it was going to be tough for them. I mean, but the first game against Edith Eisenhower, I said, okay, you know, you lost a tough one, 54, 48 to a very good Edith Eisenhower team at Rochester, at Rochester University. Um, okay. You know I mean? That's a good, that's, I mean, like that's a good loss. I, I, I wouldn't mind it at all. The one that bothers me is the one against, um, Royal Oak Shrine. um, I didn't expect the, you know, I didn't expect them to, they were leading that game most of the first half, and then Royal Oaks Shrine slowly came back and eventually caught them and ended up being a 26-23 um, win for the um, for Royal Oaks Shrine over Berkeley, and I was just going like, where's this team's offense? I mean, then I find out, of course, Maya Jones did not play in that game. Jones is a big part of that team. Um, for Coach Cody Feltner. And, you know, to see them only score 23 points, that's just inexcusable. It really is inexcusable. For this team to start 0-2, to me, this is a worrying sign for them. I have never been concerned for a team like I've seen with Berkeley, um, considering where they were at last year. Um, do they miss Ashley Loon so much? That's the question we have. When it look at Berkeley, I mean, you know, obviously, where's Avery Wintergarden been? Where is um, Malvin Nolan been? Where is um, where has Ava Beard been? I mean, you got these players who've been there, experienced the district championship team. I mean, so what's going on with this team right now? I don't know how to explain. What is going on with the Bears right now? Because I had Berkeley ranked high to start the year. This team, I had them high. Because I thought they would be ready to make the next step. Because it looks like to me that they haven't been. Now what helps them is they got two weeks to figure it out. They got two weeks. I mean, you don't play another game. So if you're Coach Cody Feltner, you've got to get your team back, back to practice. Get them ready. For the rest of the year. Because you know league plays coming up. And you're going to be one of the teams. That a lot of teams are going to look at. <laughs> I mean bottom line is. When you look at Berkeley. You know the fact that they have not improved. You know from. Especially the first two games. Especially lost to Royal Oak Shrine. That is the game that really bothers me with them. Is that loss to Shrine. I mean their schedule still gets tough. I mean their schedule is difficult. But when you look at that district, it's the same district as last year. Only you have home court. But when I look at it, at it this way, I think Royal Oak's better. 
I think that, you know, Detroit Renaissance, they just went and destroyed Midland Dow the other night um, over at Belleville. I mean, they just, they won 66-31. I mean, Midland Dow is a heck of a program, too. I mean, I mean, like, coached by Kyle Diesel. I mean, like, I couldn't believe what they did. Um, but if you're Berkeley, you got to get things figured out quick. Because I'll tell you what, right now, this team is in a lot of trouble right now. And when you look at the rest of the white, you know, obviously you have Oxford, you have North Farmington. Um, Seahome's been like a pure Jekyll and Hyde. I mean, I mean, Seahome, in my opinion, they're lucky to be on. They're lucky to be one on one right now. I mean, they're lucky not to be on two, especially with how they played against Bloopy Hills in that fourth quarter. Um, where they end up getting outscored 19-5, to almost losing that game 56-55 um, to Bloompia Hills, who I think has really improved this year. And I think they're the favorite in the blue for a reason. Now, Farmers could say something about it, but Berkeley's got some serious, serious concerns. I mean, that's really the bottom line is when I look at the Bears, is this is a team that's got, you know, they've got some, Serious, serious concerns. I mean, you know, going forward. And if Coach Cody Feltner can't fix it, they're in trouble. I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, they've got to play better. That's really how it is for Berkeley. They really do. Um, bottom line is, I mean, for Berkeley, they've just got to play better. Um, let's go to what I learned from the um Lakes Valley OA challenge. Um Obviously, that was a, a stretch of nine games that took place in two days. Um, they had two games at Water, Vermont, two games at Milford, um, and then they had five games at Troy um, on that Saturday. Of course, I attended the um, Troy game, uh, the Troy all all five Troy games, um, and I'll give you my thoughts on all five teams. Um, what I saw. Um, let's look at the first game. Let's look at let's look at the um, games over at um. Water for Mott first. Um, Farmington beat Water for Mott 34-17. Of course, Farmington came off a really tough 56-50 loss at Troy Athens. I'm going to talk to Red Hawks in a minute. Why I really think Troy Athens is, is going to be a scary team. I mean, I really do think that. Um, obviously, when you look at that game, and, you know, far, I mean, Yasmin Dorp has been playing outstanding basketball. She had 18 points in that game against Water for Mott. Um, now, the Corsairs have really struggled as a program um, lately. I mean, so when, when you really look at, at this game, um, you know, it was a good bounce back win for Farmington, um, considering how they lost to Troy Athens on their home floor by six. Um, bottom line is, I I think Farmington, they, they are a threat to Bloopy Hills, and I think there's a reason why they are. Um, and I think it's because of Yasmin Thorpe. Um, she's been playing good basketball, but they need more of consistent play from Carissa Hankins. I think Carissa Hankins can do more. I mean, last two games, she's only scored eight points, um, in each of those two games. And that to me, you know, that is kind of a concern for coach Laura Guzman, but I, I would love to see more from Carissa Hankins. I, I mean, like if she can, cause I know she's got, she's got more in her. Um, you know, I mean, let's, she, I mean, like. I think she could be a double-digit fig girl and night type of player. Um, but, you know, when you look at Farmington right now, sitting at one and one um, you know, they're in, an, they're in an okay spot, you know what I mean? But they, they could be 2-0. and oh, But, you know, bottom line is they got that bounce-back win against um, Waterford um, Mott. You know, it was a big win for them at the time. Um, we'll see what happens there. Um with them. Um North Farmington um played Wall Lake um Central. Um North Farmington won that one. I think it was um I think it was 39-25. Um Stella Leffler had a really nice game for them at Penelope Crary. Um also had a nice game for North Farmington. But when I look at the Raiders this year, um obviously you got Leffler, you got Crary. Um that's really where you know when I look at the Raiders Okay, you know you can count on those two a night. You know, they're going to get maybe at least, you know, left for probably maybe 15 a night. Quarry maybe at least 14 a night. Um, or maybe at least 15 a night each from both of them. Where's that third and fourth scoring coming from? 
That's the question I would ask Coach Jeff Simpson right now. Where's that third and fourth scoring going to come? I mean, against a and obviously, they won that one by 11. Um, South Florida Arts and Tech, that's a, that's a whole another, another story there to talk about. I mean, they're off to an 0-2 start. Um, lost both their games by 11 points. Um, of course, um, they lost to, um, you know, Wixon St. Catherine, Siena Academy, 57-46 um, Friday night. Um, there are some serious concerns when I look at the Warriors. Um, but back to North Farmington. Um, the Raiders right now sit at two and zero. Really nice right now the way they're at. Um, but I they there were times they didn't look great against A and T. I mean, third quarter when you look at that game against A and T. I mean, there was clearly a moment where Southfield Arson Tech was a better team. And if you're Coach Jeff Simpson, you got to go like, what's going on here? You know what I mean? And then lucky for them, so left one Penelope Query both saved them. That's really what it is. The question for me is, what does Simpson do if one of his two stars gets hurt? That is the big question because we truly saw what happened last year with Stella Leffler when she got when she got went down. North Farmington's a completely different team. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you're the Raiders, you know you gotta you gotta prepare yourself for a contingency plan if one of those two girls goes down. I mean, like, so that's something, and that's where it comes down to third and fourth scoring. I mean, <clears throat> that's the big key for North Farmington going forward. It's going to be who's their third score, who's their fourth score going to be. There's some options there. Um, is it Eliza Muller? Is it Aria Jihad? Um, I don't know. That's the big question we have when you look at North Farmington. That's the big, big question. You know, but when you look at the Raiders, what they did against Wall Lake Central, good win for them. Really good win. For them. Um, then we go to the games over at Milford. Um, Lakeland 29, Adams 25. It was a heck, it was a good defensive low scoring slugfest. Um, Adams, of course, Lakeland, of course, um, shutting down um, Morgan McPherson, who was very instrumental in their game against Lapeer. Um, McPherson had a, I think he had about, 18 points in their win against Lapeer over at Lapeer on Tuesday night. Um, but when you look at Adams, they're going to win and lose games with their defense. And they, I thought defensively Adams the last two games, and I'm going to be honest with you, I thought they've been really good. I mean, if you hold a team under 35 or under 40, that normally wins you games. That normally does. Adams has been in both those games. You know, so when you look at Adams, yeah, they're better than people think they are. I mean, obviously, you got Samantha Blaine there. You got Morgan McPherson there. Um, freshman class, who's been really good. You got Anaya Howard there. Um, her coach, Joe Malberg. Um, so when you look at Adams, you know, you got to say with them is, I would use the Aaron Rodgers comment he said a couple of years ago with Adams um, to describe the Highlanders. Relax. I think Adams is fine. Do I expect him to win the white this year? Probably not. Um, and then on Lakeland's case, people are going to ask me about who is the best team in the Lakes Valley. So I'm going to answer that in a little bit because I think there's clearly a team that is really good in the Lakes Valley. Do I think are they worthy of the top 10 in Oakland County? Probably not, but we'll see. <laughs> but with, back to Adams, I think Adams, you know, they played all right against Lakeland. They, they it, it took a steal just to win that game. It, you know, it took a steal just to win that game. I mean, it was a low-scoring game. Um, give props to Lakeland for winning that one. Um, tough way for Adams. Yes, they're 1-1, one and one, but it should have been 2-0, and oh, but at least they're not 0-2, and, and that's a good sign for them going forward um, for the Highlanders. I mean, yes, they got a tough week looming this week with um, Rochester, El Zudor, Northwest, and then Rochester coming up this week. Um, difficult matchups coming up for Adams. So that is something to really, really watch for there going forward there. Um, then you have Rochester against um, against Milford. This was a 33-18 win for Rochester over Milford. Um, when I look at this game, um, I mean, Rochester's coming off, came off a really tough loss to Farmfield's Mercy. 
33 to 30. And it was a terrible, terrible um, feeling for them. I mean, I talked to um, Coach Bill Thurston after the, um, after the game. Um, and I, I asked how his team did, you know, how he was doing, you know, and he's doing all right, you know. Um, back to his team, and we lost 33-30. Too many turnovers, um, you know, too many missed free throws. You know, it's going to happen. It's the first week of the year, you know. When you miss free throws, um, <laughs> when you miss free throws, you know, when you can't get a rhythm in, you know, that's fine. I mean, you know, but Rochester's problems, you know, and I'm not being media, obviously comes from the point guard spot. I mean, when you were have to rely on Alice Mack driving the driving the ball down the court several times, that's not going to help you things. That's not going to help things. Um, but Max has been playing good for them. Um, Robinson's been playing all right for them. Um, I mean, like, but when you really look at Rochester, um, you know, the the concern I have with Rochester, honestly, is they just, you're averaging 33 points. You know, you're averaging over 32, 31 and a half points a game. That's not, that's a concern for me. And you got a very tough matchup with Utica Ford coming up. And Utica Ford's been beating people, literally. And what they did to Utica Eisenhower was just absolutely incredible. I mean, I couldn't believe what they did to that program, to that team. I mean, Utica Eisenhower was a really good team, and they just laid I think it won 61-38 on them. I mean, it was a stunner. Um, so Rochester's going to have their hands full. Um, they clearly going to have their hands full. Um, and then you look at, um, you know, so when and then Rochester defensively. They look really good defensively. I mean, that's really where I think has been Bill Thurston's bread and butter has always been the defensive side of the basketball. Um, you know, they've been playing really good defense, keeping teams under 40. You know, if you keep a team under 40, you're going to win games. I mean, like, that's really where it is with Rochester. I mean, last year, I think they allowed under 40 points, I think, three times. Um, you know, at 40 or over, they allowed that three times. So when I look at Rochester, um, in all reality, you know, they've got to start scoring, producing offensively. I mean, like, they've got to find, you know, besides Robinson and Mack, you know, you got proven playmakers who can shoot the ball like a Abby Pleasant or a C.B. Norgrove or an Ava Williams. Um, they've got to find that guard who can score. I mean, like, because, you know, teams are going to really rely on Robinson and Mack um, that you're going to have to be that, you know, that they're going to have to find at least somebody who can score on a consistent basis. Um, especially from the guards front, especially what they got Lumen with Utica Ford coming up this week. Um, so Rochester's got a really difficult task ahead of them um, going forward there. Um, before we talk the Saturday games for the OA, for the um, Lakes by OA Classic, I do want to talk a little bit about Clarkston. Um, obviously, they got a freshman, Ellie Roback. Um, she's had 16 points in the last two games. Um, you know, and Ava Hernandez is coming as back fully healthy. Um, that says a lot right there where they're at. Off to a 2 0 start. Um, I think rollback is gonna have to be a big, big key for Clarkson this year, obviously. Um <laughs> that's a team that, you know, they we're gonna know a lot about them when they play Macomb Dakota Tuesday night. So we'll see what happens there. Groves is coming off a tough 41 35 loss. Um to um Novi. Um, 15-1 run, you know, you can't, that can't happen. You know, that really can't happen. So we'll see what happens with Groves. So I just wanted to talk about a little bit about those two teams before I talk about the Saturday games, obviously. Um, you know, to talk about those two teams a little bit. Um, Clarkson, I think they're rolling right now, but we're going to know a lot about them Tuesday night when they go to McComb, Dakota. Groves, they've just got to figure something out. I mean, like mentally. Where is it? You know what I mean? That's where the key is for Groves. So that's my thoughts on both those two teams. Now let's go to the Saturday games. Um, Troy, I mean, I went Troy High School on Saturday. We had Troy Athens taking on Wall Lake Western. Um, this wasn't much of a contest. I mean, Troy Athens won pretty convincingly. Um, Skylar Emerson looks like a completely different player for Coach J.C. Klump. Um, I really like her game a lot. Um, she, I think she's more comfortable. It, playing the guard role. Um, Rebecca Delilah, I mean, I thought she played she played all right, you know, and then um, 
you know, obviously with Abby Malone, I think Malone in the in, in the interior, um, that helps a lot for Troy Athens. Um, I mean, like, um, L.A. Musco, I thought really struggled against Wall Lake Western. Um, but I'll be honest with you, I just didn't think Wall Lake Western was really good. Um, I, I they fouled way too much. Um, they had trouble handling Troy Athens' full court trap. Um, I mean, this they're they're gonna struggle all year in the Lakes Valley. I mean, that's how it is with um, with um, Wall Lake Western. But Troy Athens, off to a 3-0 start. Preston wins against Shrine. Knocked off Farmington. And now this. Um, for Coach J.C. Klump, after having a, only a six-win year last year, I think Troy Athens, they've already almost matched half of that win total from a year ago. Um, that basically tells you, okay, um, we're going to be a different team. Now, does this maybe make a difference going, um, making a move up in the standings in the white? I mean, like, it certainly does look possible. I mean, obviously, when you look at, um, you know, the division as it is right now, obviously, you got Oxford, North Farmington. Um, I mean, like, you know, pro likely these are two top teams. Royal Oak could be a sleeper. Um, Seaholm there, Harper Woods is there. Um, Harper Woods, I really can't judge them yet. Um, with what they are, um, but I think Troy Athens they could surprise some people. I really think you know if they keep playing this same style of play, where they can at least control tempo, control things. I mean, like you know, basically be the aggressor. Then I think Troy Athens could be a team that could make some moves. I mean, they can make some significant impacts. And I think you know when you really look at what the Red Hawks have done. Um, off this 3-0 and start, there is a reason why they're 3-0. and Then they got a tough test coming up with Troy. I mean, like, coming up. I mean, I will be very curious to see that game. Um, does, you know, when you look at it, of course, obviously you look at what happened last year at, um, Troy Athens when, um, when, um, Troy Athens upset Troy now. You know, it, but Troy got him back in the postseason, but that was because Troy was fully healthy in the postseason. So this will be an interesting game between Troy and Troy Athens, considering Troy Athens has more experience than Troy does. But I just think when you look at the matchup, I'm keeping a really close eye on in that game. It's going to be Diamond Prince against Skylar Emerson. That is going to be the matchup to really watch for in that game. Of course, we're going to talk Troy in a couple minutes here, obviously, and Diamond Prince, um, what she's been doing the last, um, two games, I mean, last three games, I mean, she's been playing really good basketball for Troy, um, obviously, but it'll be really interesting to see what happens there in that one, but Troy Athens right now off to a good start, um, they are clicking on all cylinders right now, um, then we have Stony Creek against, um, South Lion, um, you know, this game was, it was, it was a blowout, but it ended up being a little bit closer than people thought it would, because South Lion cut the lead to eight, but Stony Creek ended up finding a way and winning that one. I think a lot of that was the play of Mia Carson. Mia Carson had a really nice game for Coach Kellen James's team. Um, when you look at Stony Creek this year, obviously they're going to rely a lot on um, on Mia Carson, Sarah LaPrairie, and uh, Emily Flynn. Um, obviously, and but Lily Solik, I think, is the wild card here. And also Merrick Slavak for Stony Creek. Um, you know, Slavak played really well off the bench. Um, you know, so she's the sixth girl off the bench for Coach Kellen James. Um, for me with Stony Creek, I think bench plays a concern um, for Coach Kellen James. And, I, and it kind of showed in that game against South Lion. They had a lot of trouble with their um, with their little point guard um, over at South Lion. They had a little bit of trouble. I thought she played really well for South Lion against Stony Creek. Um, but when you look at Stony Creek off to a 2 0 start, um, they just dominated Seaholm and then knocking off South Lion. I think that's a good win for Coach Kellen James, um, for confidence sake, um, you know, to get his team heading on the right, on the right way, on the right path. They do get Vulture Lake St. Mary's coming up. Um, that should be a win for Stony Creek. Um, I know they got to play Macomb Lance Cruz North. That's going to be really difficult. Well, actually, I take that back with Macomb Lance Cruz North. I mean, like, they did lose a lot. Um, you know, they're coming off a 
So I'm very curious to see what happens with them. Um, but but I, I just think when you look at Stony Creek right now, um, yeah, obviously they're going to ride Carson, LaPrairie, um, Flynn, Solek, um, Kelsey Butcher, who's who's been – I think Kelsey Butcher's been playing really good basketball, and also Merrick Schlaubach. Um, you know, when you look at Stony Creek relying on them, um, I think they're going to be fine. Um, but, you know – was it was it was a little uneasy at first for Stony Creek, of course, being up by, you know, 13, 15, then it got down to eight, but then they found a way and pulled away late. So it was a good win for Stony Creek to knock off a really gutsy South Lion program. Um, I think South Lion, yes, they're very young, but they're going to get better. Um, the fact they're not a deep team, which is a concern for the Lions, um, you know, I think wearing them down, getting them into foul trouble was a big difference for Coach Kellen James's team. Um, in that game. Um, then we have West Bloomfield against South Lion East, and this wasn't even close. I mean, there's a reason why West Bloomfield is ranked number one in the in the in the in the league this year. There's a reason why. Um, they're physical, they're quick, they're athletic. Both Davis sisters, both Hendrick sisters, um. And Kendall Hendricks doesn't even start. She's on the bench. Um, that tell they start Ava Lord instead of instead of Sydney instead of Kendall Hendricks. Sydney Hendricks looks like a completely different player. Um, she rebounds the ball well. Um, Summer Davis rebounds the ball ball well. They shoot threes very well. Um, West Bluefield they got everything. They got the complete package. They do, but they have one fatal. Flaw. I mean, and it is a fatal flaw. And, you know, one thing you got to get if you're playing against a team like West Bluefield, if you get a tough officiating crew against them, you know, then that could be a problem. Um, but the, the word bench play, this team, you know, besides if you get to the Davis sisters, you get to the Hendricks sisters, um, and if you go to their bench, you know, who do you got going to the bench? I mean, that is the big concern, and that's a fatal flaw that I see with Coach Daryl McAllister's team is your bench play. I mean, you know, it's going to be really hard for teams to exploit that because their starting five is that good. I mean, there there's a reason why they're the defending Division One state champions. But if you can get to their bench, you know, if you can get to the bench, I'll tell you what, you got a chance in this game against them. I mean, that's the key if you want to beat West Bloomfield. But they look really good as advertised. I mean, I mean, they are really good as advertised. But for teams, you want to beat West Bloomfield, you got to get to the bench. That's really how I see it. Um, And I don't know if I see anybody on that schedule that can get to West Bloomfield with their bench. Because if you do, you know... That's the key for West Bloomfield. Um, you know, and I think that's going to be something for Coach Jeremy McAllister's got to look at. You know, you can't rely on your starting five, you know, to win your games. You just can't. You just, you've got to develop that bench. And, you know, I'm really concerned about the direction of, you know, obviously West Bloomfield um, with the bench. You know, that's the key for West Bloomfield. I mean, they have to develop their bench. And if they don't, then I think they're going to be in some trouble. That's how I look at with the Lakers is can this team develop their bench? You know, can they get the time? Obviously you got the Davis sisters, you got the Hendrick sisters. Um, they only go at least eight deep. I mean, like, you know, in basketball terms, eight, you know, if you go like six, seven deep, that's not really deep eight, not really. But, you know, when you look at teams that are really deep, you look at obviously Lake Warrior, um, they are deep. Oxford can go maybe at least eight, nine deep. I mean, like, but there's still some questions with West Bloomfield, um, especially in the bench. That is their fatal flaw. Um, but we'll see what happens with the Lakers. But they do look really good. They looked really good against South Lion East. Um, really impressive against the Cougars. Of course, South Lion East is a team that's been down this is down this year. Obviously, they they lost um, a lot from last year's team that won the Lakes Valley. Um, but they were not the same team they were. And they had an early season loss to Wixon St. Catherine Siena Academy. 
um, and that was a tough blow for them. Um, so West Bloomfield, you know, but they are the complete deal. Um, they are a really, really good team. Um, bottom line is, you know, when you look at West Bloomfield, um, they're really good. Um, and then let's look at um, let's look at Waterford Kettering and Royal Oak. Um, when you look at this matchup here with the Ravens, um, I think that the Ravens really um, they're better than I thought. Um, they're better than I thought. Um, I think Royal Oak really, um, you know, watch for Lydia Dakins. She is a good player. She is a impactful freshman. I think she's going to make some noise. She can rebound the ball. She can shoot the ball. Um, she can, um, she's a really good basketball player. I mean, you know, I mean, like she can shoot threes. I mean, like she, she's got the complete package for coach Brian Zapata. Um, I just think when you look at Royal Oak, um, you know, I think they're much better than they were last year. Lucy Freitag, I think much improved. Um, they got others that have been improved as well. I mean, like they don't really need to, you know, they had that early loss to Wall Lake Northern. I mean, like on the docket, I mean, like, you know, I mean, like early on, I mean, like it was a tough blow for them. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, we will see what happens. Um, I just think at the end of the day here, um, we'll see what, we'll see what, what happens. I mean, obviously, um, Wild Lake, what, I mean, like, um, Wild Lake Norton's a very good team. Um, we're going to see what happens. Um, and then you look at, um, and then you look at, um, you know, what Waterford Kettering, I mean, the captains, they are struggling. I mean, honestly, when you look at Waterford Kettering, um, they're a team that really, really, they're struggling a little bit right now. So when I look at the captains, I mean, like, yes, they're down, they're struggling. Um, they've got some issues. Um, we'll see what happens with them. I mean, bottom line is, you know, water for cuttering, they're struggling. Um, I'll be very curious to see what happens with them. Um, but there's some serious problems with water for cuttering. I mean, like, you know, so we'll see what happens with them. I mean, I mean, there's some concerns there with them. And then we got Troy against, um, Wall Lake Northern. That was the last game of the night. Um, I think when you look at Troy, um, they they have a young team, a very young team. Um, when I look at Troy, you know, from last year's regional championship team, um, I think that when you look at Troy, um, they're gonna be um, they're gonna be solid. Um, but this year, you know, you kind of want to look at with them the future. Um, I think with them. They have a very good point guard in um in Diamond Prince. Um, she's played really good basketball for Troy in the last three games. Obviously, you've had 16 points. Um, you know, Prince has had 20 points against Water for Kettering. Um, she had a nice game against Holly and then had 14 against Wild Lake Northern. Um, but when you really look at it here, I think there's some concern. I mean, obviously, when you look at Troy. Um, yes, they also got Regan Zyder as well, can shoot threes. Um, good player as well. Um, Charlotte Gillian, one of their three seniors. Avery Allen's another one. Um, when I look at Troy, they, they, they look like a prototypical young team. I mean, you know, and, you know, you're relying a lot on a young backcourt of Prince and Zyder. That's not going to be an easy, easy thing if you're Coach Julius Porter. Obviously, when you look at last year, you have players like Alyssa Mantuza, Charlotte Taboka, and Kendall Zyder. Um, it's a very difficult transition for Troy. Um, you know, when you're going from a veteran-heavy team that went to state quarterfinals a year ago, and then you make the, um, and then you make the, um, and then you lose to, um, and then you lose the, um, and then you lose all that talent, and then you have to rebuild the program from scratch a little bit. You know, you're replacing a lot of talent. Um, you know, and then now you have a situation where you're just, you're playing a lot of freshmen and sophomores. Is it going to get you better in the future? Yes. But, you know, in the present, that could be a little bit of a problem because 
when you really look at it here with Troy's case, um, you know, obviously, you know, you look at a player like Diamond Prince, who's got the complete package. She can dribble drive. She can shoot threes. Um, she can go inside out. I mean, like, you know, the only issue I have with her is her free throw shooting. Um, but I think Prince is a good point guard for the future for for Troy. And you have Regan Zyder as well. I mean, Regan Zyder, obviously, you know, I don't know how. Um, I, I think she's the second of the Zyder family. I mean, I know there's another one in the, um, I know there's another Zyder in the um, middle school ranks over there at Troy and, and Macy. Um, and I've been hearing a lot about her that she could be better than both Kendall and Reagan. And that says something right there. Um, but Reagan is a very good shooter. Um, I'm very curious to see, you know, but her game is a lot different than Kendall's was. Obviously, Kendall, of course, had the, um, you know, she had the, um, she can go in, inside out. Reagan, I don't know if she can go inside yet, but we'll see. Um, I mean, Charlotte Gillian's a solid shooter. Um, but when they played Wall Lake Northern, I mean, like, they just did not look, they didn't look very good at all, um, in that game. They lost 47 to 30. Um, the difference in that game was, um, you know, was, um, Wall Lake Northern's experience, um, in that game. They were the difference in that one. Um, I just think when you look at that game, um, I just think that, um, you know, the Knights, they played really well. They were they played good basketball. Um, I just think at the end of the day here, um, Wall Lake Northern, um, you know, bottom line is, you know, when I look at Wall Lake Northern, um, they are really, really good. I mean, you know, I they got they're they're scrappy, they're experienced. I mean, like, I think they're gonna make some noise um in the Lakes Valley. I mean, like I talked to Matt Maury about this a couple days ago about okay, who do you think is the best team? in the Lakes Valley, and I'll tell you what, I know who the best team in the Lakes Valley is, and it's a pretty simple one here for me, and that's Wall Lake Northern, because people are going to say, well, what about Lakeland? What about South Lion East? Um, but to I look at it clearly to me, um, what I saw in the Lakes Valley OA Challenge, um, the team I think that can make some damage, that can make significant noise this year, it is Wall Lake Northern. And <laughs> They have the experience. They have the playmakers. Yes, they got a first-year coach. Um, you know, they made a statement when they knocked off Royal Oak. Um, they made some noise when they um, when they went in there and knocked them. Um, you know, and, and then, of course, winning against Troy on their home floor. That really says a lot right there um, when you look at Royal Oak, um, you know, beating them. That, that's a big deal there. Yes, is Royal Oak. Royal Oak's a young team, and I get it. I mean, like, obviously, you know, when you look at Royal Oak, um, obviously, they're a team that really looked, um, I think Royal Oak is much better than they were last year. Um, I really think that, um, I think that um, Wall Lake Northern, you know, with what they had last year, they were a young team. Um, this year, I think they're a much more complete team. Um, I think that the Knights are a team to really watch for in the Lakes Valley um, going into that, going into the stretch there. Um, overall, the OA, the Lakes Valley OA Challenge, um, OA won it seven games to two. Um, so again, I think second straight year, I mean, like they didn't have in 2020, but obviously the second, I think a third, third year, third year, the OA won it. Um, the first time they had the Lakes Valley won it five to four. Um, so when you really look at this, the competition, obviously, um, you know, it's, it's really good for everybody. So it really is. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward um, when it comes to the Lakes Valley and the OA um, going forward there. Um, when you look at the rest of the league, obviously, we talked Oxford already. We talked um, Bloomfield Hills already, Farmington. Um, Avondale doesn't look, Avondale did not look very good against um, Warren Mott when I saw them. I watched the film. Um, I know there was one play in the fourth quarter. They had six girls, which is a very concern, concerning thing going forward there. And then they didn't look great against Ortonville Brandon. Of course, um, Ortonville Brandon, they got a very good player in um, Brandon Abney, uh, Riley Abney. Um, she had a big night for them. Um, Oak Park didn't look good against Detroit um, leadership, against Detroit 
University Prep. Um, that was I think that was sixty four thirteen was that final score there. Um, there's some serious concerns with Oak Park. It looks like they really have not done a lot of changes with that program ever since. Um, you know, and that's a big concern if you coach Chantel Corson. Um, you know, they've got to find some scoring. They got to find some. You know, defense, I mean, like, depth's a big concern. Program strength's a big concern when I look at Oak Park. Um, Ferndale University, um, for Coach Brianna Rowe, um, this, they did not look good against Hazel Park at all. Um, that was a complete blowout as well. I think that was 52-14. Um, just didn't look very good in that game. Um, you know, and, you know, yes, good win for Coach Dakota Ogles, but if you're Hazel Park, I mean, like, if you're Ferndale, this is a big time concern for you, especially hanging in the postseason, where I thought Ferndale University might have a good chance to maybe win the district. But now you got to look at okay, now you're gonna have to change your mind a little bit here and say, wait a minute here, Hazel Park. Obviously, with Coach Dakota Ogles, um, they got depth on that team. There's some serious concerns there. When I look at with Ferndale University, they've got to get some things addressed and fixed real quick because it looks like to me that the Eagles could be in some trouble. Um. And then there's Pontiac. Um, Pontiac, they took on Pontiac Notre Dame Prep. Um, that game was 40-9 to in favor of the Fighting Irish over the Phoenix. Um, Pontiac, when you look at them, there's some concerns. I mean, when you look at the schedule, Pontiac still got to play. You still got Lake Orion. You got Troy Athens on that schedule. That is going to be really, really daunting, um, really dangerous matchup there for the Phoenix. Um you know, going again in those two games, that's going to be a serious, serious concern um, when you look at those, those matchups, obviously, um, for Pontiac. Big, big concerns I have for the Phoenix going forward there, um, heading in there. Um, when you look at the girls' basketball docket for the week, obviously, when you look at the top 23, um, obviously, um, the rankings, you know, I didn't make a little bit of changes. Um, I still cannot judge... Ferndale or Harper Woods yet because they really haven't played a game yet. Um, I know they start playing this week. Um, Ferndale, I know, does. Harper Woods, I think they do as well. Um, so when you really look at it here, it'll give me a better idea to describe where the Pioneers are at. Um, I know Coach Paul Allen's got a lot of experience coming back. Um, I also know that um, – I also know with Ferndale, obviously, with Coach um, – you know, Coach Keith Paris there. Um, I will be very curious to see how the Eagles do um, in the blue this year. Um, really curious to see what happens. Other than that, I, I got a really good idea on everybody right now um, where they are at right now. And it, you can pretty much look at the top 20 on three on my blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Also, you can take a look at the... Um, you know, also you can take a look at the um, ON TV um, blog as well. It's also on there as well. So when you really look at it here, a lot to look at um, going forward there. Um, boys basketball, obviously, we talked about boys basketball previews last week. Um, the games they do start today. Um, it'll be really interesting to see what happens there. Um, I think that the Eagles, I think when you look at the boys basketball docket, of course, I was texting um, Scott Bernstein, of course, the top my top players coming into the year. Top teams, obviously. Um, of course, hoping he gets them out soon. So we'll see what happens there um, going forward there um, with that with boys basketball. My final thoughts of the week, obviously. You know, a lot of girls basketball stuff to talk about this week. Um, obviously, where everybody's at. So we'll see what happens going forward um, as we head into the season. So we'll see what happens. All right, I'm going to sign off here. I'll make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Also, the ON TV blog as well for the latest information surrounding the entire league. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Take care. God bless. And I will see you all next week, everybody. See you next week. And see you. And see you. And God bless everybody. Take care.